First lesson, Romans chapter 9, verse 11. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that call it. I now ask the question, does it now mean that Jacob had become the firstborn? Even though he first even though the first is serving the second, has Jacob taken the position of the first son? Once you are the first, you continue in the position of the first forever. The first has really to serve the second, but the position of the firstborn is incontestable, but continues to remain for the rightful owner as it was written about our Lord Jesus Christ. People would persecute him, kill him, and he would rise from the dead after three days. As the people had taken such steps against our Lord Jesus Christ, did they remove him from the position of the Messiah, the Christ of God? All that has been written about you the people, that people will persecute you, hate you, kill you, punish you, torture and torment you. These things have been written to be fulfilled in you. These situations cannot cause the promise of God not to be fulfilled in you. If you search the scriptures, you will discover that Jacob was not wealthier than Esau. After he had sojourned in a strange land for a long time, he came back and when he met his brother, he, Jacob, bowed down, showing that Esau was still his senior. He divided some of his wealth to his brother. But before he did this, Esau, Esau had already established in the land. The relationship between him and his brother was just the fulfillment of what had been written. Esau was the firstborn. He served his father day and night. That was why Isaac wanted to give him the blessing. But because of the mother's manipulation, Jacob received the blessing instead of Esau, thus fulfilling what was prophesied that the elder shall serve the younger. The whites have known this, but they are struggling in their own way. Because of the low position which the Africans have occupied, they are struggling in their own way. It has now dawned on them that God has arrived. They now have to take their rightful position. God has never forgotten his own promise. What he has promised stands forever. Do you think that God can, first, God can forsake his first son and replace him with the second? That prophecy has now been set aside, but the glory of God must continue to be manifested. It was also prophesied that our Lord Jesus Christ would be persecuted and crucified, and that people, and that prophecy has now been put aside. Right now, there is no such thing again. He has now come to rule over the whole universe. When you hear of any prophecy, do not begin to quake. Stand firm, because God is unchangeable. There is no variableness in Him. You are advised that you should be ver that you should be wary in well doing, for in due season you will reap good fruits, if you faint not. Since God has elected his first son to take over the superintendency 
of the entire world, no matter what others do, it is man who has been elected to rule. After God had created every other thing, including animals, birds, fishes in the water, trees and creeping things, he then gave man the superintendency to rule over his creations. It is said that the spirits of all those who prophesied will continue to remain under his rule. Africa is the kingdom of God. That was why the centurion told our Lord Jesus Christ, For I am a man set under authority, and I say to one, Go, and he goes, and to another, Come, and he comes. You are also a man set under authority. You can say to the spirit, Go, and he goes. And if you say to another, Come, and he will come. From the beginning, God had not said that angels should rule, no matter how weak man may be, no matter how stupid man may be, God can never regret the position that he has given to man. That position he will continue to nurture and glorify. In the same token, since God has made the pronouncement as regards the city of God, the kingdom of God is Africa and God germinated in Africa. That has been written. It has been signed, sealed and delivered. There is no running away from it. It has come to stay. And when the name of the Father is mentioned, the people laugh, arguing that there is nothing you can do. You have no money. You cannot invent anything. What can you do? The visit of our women to Great Britain was the handwork of God. God is doing his work in a marvelous way, under the ground, in the air, and everywhere. God gave the worldly people the opportunity to open universities, departments of religion, seminaries, Bible colleges, Trinity colleges to study the Bible, theology, and religion. But within the twinkle of an eye, he turned the table and things have appeared in a way they would not have appeared. If it was said that the black man would go and teach the whites how to manufacture aeroplanes and motor cars, that could have been acceptable to them. If it were said that the Africans should open universities in order that these people should come and learn, it would have been acceptable to them. But to say that the whites should come down and receive the word of God and be taught by an African, that is what they think is unacceptable to them. The incomprehensibility of God's ways. The Americans feel that should God have to come back to earth, he would be born unto them. And so they have started making preparations. I wonder whether they have been reading the scriptures to know what was written about this particular time. These people, rather than look for Christ, are looking for riches. And people will accumulate riches for a time. And after a short time, they disappear. The ways of God is incomprehensible. If there is any person who argues that he cannot fear God, let such a person think about himself. Up till now, you are still doubting. Why should such a thing happen here in Calabar, not in any other place, but in Nigeria, indeed in Africa? 
God has never forgotten you. He has not failed to fulfill his promise, but he exercises long patience. Maybe many of the white men have been conjecturing why things are found the way they are. No person has been able to know why things are happening the way they do. I am going to tell you the reasons today. Why you are doubting is that you think that there is no good thing that has come from Africa to the, Euro to the European countries and no person has known the reason why things are happening the way they do. The reasons are what I am going to give to you this morning. Can any good thing come from Africa? You are witnesses to the fact that you are all poor people. You are, caught, you are all stricken with abject poverty. You have no money. You have no wisdom. You have not attained any height in education. And you do not know anything at all. Why should this type of thing happen within you? All church denominations originated from the European countries. All monies came from the European countries. Languages, languages came from there. Wealth were brought from there. But just look at us here. We do not know anything. We cannot do anything. But many spectacular things have happened. You are still doubting and do not believe yourself. You rather depend so much on the wise. God has never forgotten the black man. He had already made his promise. It does not depend on how rich you are. It does not depend on how educated you are. It does not depend on the good things you can do. But he has redeemed his promise by allowing his wishes to be fulfilled in you. God's wisdom is hidden from the wise and prudent, but revealed to babes. You would see why it has been possible for women to travel overseas to overseas countries. Children and and illiterate have traveled to European countries. This is not because you are going on your own volition but it is the fulfillment of the will of god you do not find millionaires governors princes and princesses kings emperors and principalities of this world here you do not find presidents and uniform personalities in the society here you have no money and you have nothing at all but you continue to doubt why these things should happen in your midst. You have not gone to school. You do not know how to speak any language. But you see how things are moving in a mysterious way. Brotherhood manifested. Brethren, many people look astonished at what is happening in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. They become so bamboozled because when they ask you which Bible college you attended, but you did not attend any, you did not read the Bible, how many years you spent in university, but you did not attend any university. It is very surprising to them. Another surprising thing is that if you went anywhere, you would not hear any news about any person you would hear about God go to the streets of London America or Nigeria you cannot hear any other thing apart from brotherhood if you go into the midst of people you constitute yourself as an object of fear to people they do not come near you even in your families people look at you with surprise so, brethren, 
when you read the scripture, you should be very careful. Read between the lines. The words spoken by God. That is the reason I ask you, why do you look at me as if I use my power to do all the things you see? It is the fulfillment of the prophecy of God. And whenever you see the manifestation of what God has promised, which will come to pass in this last age, God does not forget the destitutes and the afflicted. What he has chosen, he has chosen. What he has loved, he has loved. Already, people are complaining that when the wives come, they will take over their places from them. And I ask, with what will they use to take your places from you? Will they take them away from you by wealth or by attainment in education? They can never take your places away from you. And so, brethren, I do not intend to take you further than this. I do not preach, but I am revealing. You have to listen attentively to the second lesson, which is going to be read to you. Second lesson, Romans chapter 8 verse 30. Moreover, whom he predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. You have been reading through this, that passage. Have you ever understood the meaning of the passage? Those whom he first predestinated, he called, justified, and glorified. Because he first called the Africans, he kept them in the position which he first called. But you feel that you are, you are a rejected race. How has he rejected you? He has predestinated you and has called you back to give you what glory which was yours. Have you not seen the position of the elder? Even though he was said, even though it was said that the elder shall serve the younger, lately that prophecy has been fulfilled, but the position of the firstborn is still there. He first of all justified him and has kept him in the position of the firstborn to glorify him. The stages of world civilization. If you read the issue of the world you will see that the various stages of civilization you will see the various stages of civilization. After the Egyptian you will see the land of the rivers Tigris and Euphrates, the Middle East, the European countries, and the African countries. All these places were there. That position of the firstborn was given to Africa. That is why has he has come back, even though you must have been cheated in the past, even though you must have been relegated, now he has come and on his arrival he has first called you and predestinated you. He has justified you now. He has given you the glory. If any person should ask you why these things should happen, open the passage, open that passage to them. Let him see the evidence for a proof because God does his things according to his will. It does not depend upon how righteously you are or what you can do. But once he has destined you for any position, he must have to fulfill his promise. The whites have gone to the moon 
and to all the planets they have learned all forms of discipline and subjects but since God has given this glory to you have you not seen his appearance he has first of all predestinated you and has kept his promise for you he has now fulfilled that promise by calling you and placing you at your rightful position he has blessed you justified you and has glorified you he has given you a commission to march into all parts of the world and to liberate them it does not consist in the knowledge of science and technology or in any other thing but he has emphasized that those whom he first predestinate he first of all called them and since he had first called them he has justified them and since he had first justified them he has glorified them he has not considered others yet but has first of all predestinated you called you justified you and glorify you. Calabar is the city of God. Why do you find London and America the theaters of Christian religion this day? This is because these two countries feel that they are the only cocks to crow. Therefore, no other country should introduce the idea of Christian religion to any part of the world that is why they are taking the lead as God has made his visitation to this part of the world they have sent their spies to all parts of the world why is it that the city of Calabar has been the greatest theater of Brother of the Cross and Star this particular place as its name implies according to the local uh, um, interpretation if you are capable then you can live in of all the towns and cities in Nigeria and indeed West Africa the first place where the first missionaries arrived arrived was Calabar why is it that Calabar has become the headquarters of the city of God people from various tribes of this country are here nothing was nothing has ever had roots in Calabar no matter what what God what the people of Calabar will uproot it they had sworn that no white man would preach the word of God in their land they would pay deaf ears to the whites not to talk about not to talk of the black man no person can give any type of instruction here and it will be received by any person you are not elected because of your righteousness but because you had been predestinated brethren I want to ask you is it because we are good or because we are righteous or because we are looking for God is it because we have good conduct or that we have served him rightly that we should be led into this kingdom all these times did you know that you were the people selected and kept from the beginning of time and you were the persons to whom God had kept this promise many people have asked this question why is it that God has first of all selected me he should have first of all selected the important personalities and those who have good conduct if it had been laid down by God according 
to his divine plan before the foundations of the world were laid your name has been nominated in that register do you realize that god has justified all of you you have no case to answer have you realized that god has glorified you he has bestowed unto you that glory which you had from the beginning of the world africa is a holy nation that is the crown he has placed on your head are you not surprised that you were not known anywhere but now everywhere you go every person take cognizance of you and whatever and wherever you go people kowtow on the ground for you they now know you but in the past no person had known you you had never been known in your family whenever any person mention your name no person recognize you but now you are the notch of all the surveys so brethren have you now realized why god has first of all come down to the africans this is because he had kept this glory for africa and has predestinated the africans this glory is bestowed on them because it was kept for them before the foundations of the world were laid